so let's take a look at theorem 6.6 .6, where we start talking about continuous functions as being functions of bounded variation. So let's suppose that we do have a continuous function on a compact interval a, b, and let's further suppose that it is differentiable um, and that the derivative is bounded on the interior of a, b, so everything on the open interval a to b. Then that is enough to give us that f is of bounded variation on a, b. So now let's take a look at the proof and see why that's going to be true. So we begin by just taking any old partition P of AB and we'll say that that thing looks like X0, X1 all the way up to Xn. Um, the thing that really makes this work is uh, we'll go back to something you probably remember as the mean value theorem. So in our book we'll reference this back to theorem 5.11. And so what that's really saying is that any point on our subinterval x sub k minus 1 to x sub k, we've got a t sub k on the interior of that thing, so that um, delta f sub k, which is just going to be f sub k, uh, f of x sub k minus f of x sub k minus 1, that that difference is going to be equal to f prime of t sub k times delta x sub k. And so um, the mean value theorem is really kind of what makes this work in this case. And so what that means, if we look at the variation of the function um, with respect to the partition P, so sigma of P, then just replacing all of those, we can replace the absolute value of delta F sub K with the absolute value of F prime of T sub K times delta sub K. And what we can go from there then is to use the fact that the derivative is bounded. And so there exists some m for which the absolute value of f prime is going to be less than or equal to m on our entire interval, um, a open interval a, b. And so we just bound this, so we bound our variance of p, our variation of with respect to p, um, by this m times our delta x sub k's, those delta x sub k's we've probably seen by now, that's just going to be a telescoping sum, and so we end up with m times b minus a. And so um, for an arbitrary partition, that thing is going to be bounded above, and that's enough to tell us that hey, f sure enough is of bounded variation on a, b. And so what this kind of leads us to is we've got a little bit of a, an idea of what a function of bounded variation is. Um, variation is just kind of measuring how much ground that a function is covering over a particular interval, how wiggly it is, or maybe something along those lines. And so what we might wonder then is how this property of being of bounded variation actually behaves under the algebra that we can do on functions. So we can add them, we can subtract them, multiply them, divide them. And so what happens um, in those cases? Well, quite naturally, um, addition, subtraction, and multiplication behave very well. And that's really the kind of context of theorem 6.9. So if we've got f and g as functions of bounded variation, then the sum, difference, and product are also going to be of bounded, var of bounded variation. So let's kind of see how that proof is going to go. So of course, uh, we start off with just a partition P of AB. Now if we look at um, delta F the, of the sum of F and G on the interval K, well, just writing out what the definition of that is, kind of rearranging some things, we see that the delta of the sum of the functions is just going to be the sum of the deltas sub k's on each one of those intervals. And so um, what that means then is that when we add up all of the terms that um, we're just using the triangle inequality so we can separate the variation of the sum um, into the sum of the variations and that becomes our upper bound and so sure enough f plus g is also of bounded variation. Probably not too surprising that pretty much the same steps are going to work for the difference 
um, of the two functions that again the steps are pretty much exactly the same so you're still going to be bounded above by um, the total variation of f plus the total variation of g and so that's going to give us that the difference of the two functions are going to be of bounded variation but now what about the product okay so if we just kind of look at delta of the product fg um, on the case then Again, writing out the definition. Now we're just going to use our little trick um, that you're probably familiar with way back from Calc 1 of adding an expression and subtracting an expression. So we're going to subtract on f of x sub k, g of x sub k minus 1 inside. So we subtract it, we add it, and then we're going to apply the triangle inequality to that. And so separating that out, we end up with the absolute value of f of x sub k times the absolute value of the delta g sub k plus the absolute value of delta f sub k times the absolute value of g of x sub k minus 1. Okay. And so now we're going to go back to a theorem that we proved um, before, our theorem 6.7, that if f and g are of bounded variation, then f and g are bounded. And so we can choose A's and B's that, so an A that's going to bound F, a B that's going to bound G. And so um, <clears throat> the variation with respect to this partition is going to be bounded above by A times um, the absolute value of delta G sub K plus B of the absolute value of delta F sub K. So then one more step after that, we just add up all of the elements of our partition. And sure enough, we come to the conclusion that the um, total, that our variation of FG with respect to the partition P is going to be bounded above by um, the bound of F times the total variation of G plus um, the bound of g times the total variation of f. And so sure enough, um, being an arbitrary partition, that gives us that f times g is going to also be of bounded variation. And so what we've done seems to work pretty well for addition, subtraction, and multiplication, but not necessarily for division as we're going to see. So if we take two functions that are of bounded variation, so if we just take the identity function, x, and we take the constant function, 1, now those are both monotonic and so of bounded variation. But if we take 1 over x, and so we've got a function that's going to be defined over the entire closed interval from 0, 1, we'll just pick an arbitrary value at 0. So if we make h of x equal to 1 over x everywhere else on 0, 1 except 0, and 1 at x equal to 0, then we're going to get a graph that looks something like this. And if we consider the family of partitions, p of n, where um, we're just taking one point in the interval, say 1 over n, for n being a positive integer, then what happens if we look at the variation with respect to p sub n of h on this, then doing a little calculation, we see that that's just going to be equal to 2 times n minus 1. And so if we take n greater than or equal to 2 as n heads off to infinity, then the variation on h with respect to this partition is also going to head off to infinity. And so it can't possibly be bounded. And so we run into a little bit of a problem. And so what we need to do then is to ask this question. So what property do we actually need in order for f to be a bounded variation? We add on this extra property, whatever it is, and that's going to imply that 1 over f is going to be a bounded variation. Well, it really doesn't take too much to figure out what extra property is going to be. Just one direct calculation is going to show us. So if we look at the absolute value of 1 over f of x sub k minus 1 over f of x sub k minus 1, then just putting those fractions together, we see that we've got an absolute value of delta f sub k on top, but then the absolute value of f of x sub k times f of x sub k minus 1 on the bottom.
And so what property do we need? If we have that 1 over f is going to be bounded, that's exactly what we need. And so that is the content of theorem 6.10. So if we take a function of bounded variation and assume also that f is going to be bounded away from zero. Now what that means is we can find some real number um, that's strictly greater than zero but less than the absolute value of f of x on the entire interval then 1 over f is going to be of bounded variation. So let's see why that's necessarily going to be true. So for the proof, we'll take P to be any partition of AB. And then from what we just did directly above, if we look at delta of 1 over F sub K, then that's just the fraction. We put the fractions together and we get this expression here where we've got our delta, absolute value of delta F sub K on top and the product of the function at our T endpoints in the denominator. And so now using the, func the fact that our function is bounded away from zero, if we take the reciprocal, then we've got that one over the absolute value of f of x is going to be less than one over m on our entire interval. So putting that into our expression for the absolute value of delta of one over f sub k, then that's going to be less than or equal to one over m squared times the absolute value of delta f sub k. So what do we do quite naturally? We add everything up since everything is additive. Um, we factor out our 1 over m squared and use the fact that f is of bounded variation to see that um, the variation of 1 over f with respect to this partition p is going to be bounded by 1 over m squared times the variation, total variation of f. And so sure enough, that's the, that's the property that we need, and we see that 1 over f is of bounded variation.